let's let f of xy be the Boolean formula equal to x and y. Let's let g of xy be the Boolean formula x or y. If you've been following along the last couple of modules, you'll realize that these formulas are instances of, they are predicates. Okay, f of x, y is a predicate. Its input takes uh, a value from the domain tf raised to the power 2. So it takes an input, a string of length 2 of truth and true and false, and it outputs x and y. Uh, g of xy is also a predicate. It acts, its input is two variables, again, from the same domain, tf squared. And f's output is going to be true or false, and g's output is going to be true or false. So f and g are predicates. And we were interested in the question, uh, for all x and y, for all elements in the domain, x, y, is it the case that f of x, y implies g of x, y. Now sometimes I'll just omit this for all x, y, and I'll simply ask you, you know, is it the case that f of x, y implies g of x, y? So if you don't see a quantifier here uh, before an implication, it sort of implicitly means that I'm quantifying over all values in the domain. It's just shorthand. Now in this case, um, is it the case that for every true-false assignment, if f of x, y is true, then g of x, y is true? The answer is yes. How do we see this? Well, we need to show that whenever f x y is true, it implies that g of x y is true. Okay. So let's look at the cases when f of x y is true. There's only one case. So f of x y is true only when x equals true and y equals true. So, um, if it's true, it means that both x and y are true. And therefore, so hence, if f of x, y is true, then certainly x or y is true. Because if f of x, y is true, it means that x is true and y is true. Therefore, x or y is true. So, g of x, y is equal to true. Okay, so we've just shown that for every truth value in the domain that makes f of x, y true, it also makes g of x, y true. And therefore, f of x, y implies g of x, y. Now you might ask, well, what about all the other assignments that makes f of x, y false? Like x is true and y is false. Well, we're not interested in those assignments. We're only interested in proving that whenever f of x, y is true, it must be the case that g of x, y is true. So we don't have to concern ourselves with cases where f of x, y is false. More generally, whenever you have a statement of the form statement 1, logical statement 1 implies logical statement 2, and you want to figure out, is it the case that statement 1 implies statement true? i.e., is this sentence in quotes true? So how would we prove that a statement like this is true? Well, step one is to assume statement one is true. And then step two is show that this implies Statement 2 is true. Okay, so for example, um, let's let um, f, uh, let's say f of x is a Boolean formula. And let's say g of x is a Boolean formula. Okay. And 
here's a statement for you. Uh, there exists an x such that f of x equals true. And I want to know, does this imply that there exists an x such that f of x or g of x is true? So I want to know, is this implication true? Okay, well, step one. We get to assume that statement one is true. So, okay, if I assume that this left-hand side here is true, it means I know that there exists an x such that f of x is true, i.e. f is satisfiable. Does this imply that there exists an x such that f of x or g of x is true? Yes, whatever x made f of x true is also going to make f of x or g of x true because it's an or. Here's another example. So let's let a uh, be some positive integer that's much bigger than zero. So think of a as two billion and a hundred thousand or something. Okay. Um, and the question is, uh, so let, let, let's let a predicate p of x be um, x squared equals a. Okay. And the domain is all integers. Okay. So, um, so let's write the following logical expression. Uh, there exists an x such that p of x is true. Okay, well we don't know. It depends on a. I mean, is this true or false? I mean, uh, you know, if if a is 81, then yeah, there exists an x such that p of x is true. If a is uh, 7, then uh, no, there's no x such that x squared equals 7. Okay. But we're interested in the following statement. Uh, there exists an x such that p of x is true. Does that imply that there exists x and y such that x squared equals a and y squared equals a and x does not equal y. Okay, so what this implication asks is, um, does the fact that there exists an x such that p of x is true imply that there exists x and y such that x squared equals a, y squared equals a, and x does not equal y? I.e., um, if a has a positive square root, you know, if there is a, an integer that squares and gets you a, then are there two distinct integers that both when you square them you get a? You know, so this says x squared equals a, y squared equals a, and x does not equal y. Is this true? Well, yes. How, how do we know that? Well, going back to step one, we assume that there exists, we assume the left-hand side is true. There exists x such that p of x is true. Okay, this means that there's some uh, value z such that z squared equals a. Okay, and z is an integer. Okay, well this also means that if you take the opposite of z, minus z, and you square it, you're also going to get a, right? So. Uh, here we have one value, z, such that z squared equals a, and we have another value, minus z, such that minus z squared equals a. So yes, if there is one square root of a, if there's one value z, such that z squared equals a, then there are two different values, z and minus z, such that both z and minus z squared equals a. So the left-hand side, if it's true, implies that the right-hand side is true, and that's why this overall statement in quotations is true.